Hi everyone and welcome to SWPL My Story and today we are joined by Spartans manager Jack Beasley. How are you Jack? Good thanks Martin, how are you? Yeah, no I'm great and I really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us today. So it was big news in the game when Debbie decided that she was going to move upstairs on a, a permanent basis um, at the club. Obviously it was a, a really difficult decision for her. We had her on just after and she said it's probably the toughest decision she's had in football but she felt that she couldn't fully commit to either role, the chief exec role or the, the manager's role fully, uh, trying to do the two. So she, when she moved up the stairs, there was a, a lot of talk within the game of who was going to step in. And uh, it was from one Spartans legend to another, and you you took the call and you stepped into the into the hot seat. So how have you found um, your introduction to it and uh, that adjustment to coaching a full-time team at that level? Yeah, I mean, obviously... I tough gig initially taking over for debut I think um, there's obviously been a massive part in Spartans punching above their weight I would suggest for a long long time um, and obviously some of the successes they've achieved down the years but obviously I understand Debbie's decision in terms of balancing the football and balancing the day job when there's ever increasing demand so yeah in terms of when the opportunity arose um, I was I was in helping with the girls 18s at Hearts prior to that um, and loved my time there but um when the offer came in to work with Spartans, it was quite a short conversation, to be honest. Um, like you mentioned, obviously, worked for the club, played for the club for a long time, got a huge affection for the club. Um, and yeah, it was an opportunity that, was, that would have been impossible to turn down. I think it would have been a bit naive to turn down. It's obviously a lot of unknowns in terms of first venture into first team football, but um, I think it's the kind of thing, if those opportunities do arise, it's the kind of thing you need to, you need to go for and give it your best shot and, regardless of the experience, just back yourself to try and do a good job. So, yeah, been in a couple of months now. Um, thoroughly enjoying it. It's probably everything I thought it would be. Really enjoyable, yet really challenging in terms of um, the nature of where we are in the league table and and the pressure, for want of a better, better phrase, on the need to pick up results in the, the last part of the season. But, yeah, really good bunch of girls, really talented bunch of girls. Um, I think I've lost track of the number of times people have said to me, you shouldn't be in the position you're in, but as we keep saying in the dressing room, we are in the position we're in and there must be a reason for that. And the reason is we haven't performed at the level we should be, um, I would say, with the quality we have. So everyone's aware of that. Everyone's obviously very determined to, um, to maintain our SWPL1 status, which I think, again, when you look at the, the other clubs that are in, in terms of loads of full-time clubs, clubs going from part-time to full-time, um, or at least are clubs that are part of a full-time Overall club, if that makes sense. So maybe the women's team isn't, but the men's team obviously is. So I think for us to maintain that SWPL1 status is, again, another amazing achievement for us. Um, and then we can try and build on next year. But now we've gotten the split. Every game is obviously massive. Um, not just if you pick up points yourself, but you're pot potentially picking up points that other people around about you can and vice versa. So, yeah, really enjoying it so far. But um, if we do managed to stay in the division and I think at that point I can maybe breathe a wee sigh of a relief at the moment it's just trying to get on with the work at the moment Yeah it wasn't the easiest uh, gigs to, to go into um, as as you mentioned already it's perceived from the from the outside that Spartan shouldn't be where they are in, in the league uh, right now with the, with the talent they have at their disposal however if you don't perform um, there's no rights to any points for any team in this league um, but you, when you came in, um, it was always going to be a bit of a transitional period. But as you say, given your affiliation uh, and name at that club, it was probably as smooth as it as it could possibly be um, moving from from Debbie to yourself. But after um, some some work with the girls, you started to see an upturn in in results just before the split, and then. As you said, you're now going to be playing all the teams around you. Um, the, the introduction of the, the split a couple of years ago into into our top flight it has been really good and really exciting for the for the supporters. But it means that almost every game's a cup final now. Yeah, I mean, just going back to your first point there about initially coming in, I think it's unfortunate. It's a very good environment to work in in terms of the people above you are very very supportive. Um, so there's not that safety net as such, but you do feel like you're. You're supported in every way when you do come in. Um, obviously knew some of the the girls from previous, the ones that have been there a long time, or even some of the younger ones that I've maybe come across um, through academy football. So I think that helped as well, having some people you know, um, and then obviously some people you don't. But 
yeah, a, a talented squad, but I think I think the main challenge when you first come in is if people are used to losing games, it becomes very hard to win games. Not even just with the players on the pitch, but more just the mentality of what it might take, and especially in difficult moments, if they have gone against you a lot that season, and sometimes it's hard to overcome them. So, yeah, I think I think the very first game, although we were under the cosh for the whole game. I think 1-0 against Hearts was probably a good starting point just for us to show that we maybe can be a little bit more resolute and a little bit more resilient and show that togetherness that's probably needed. So that was a positive start for us. Um, yeah, quite quite quickly into that, we obviously had a, an amazing result for us against Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup. We beat them 2-1 at home. I think that gave everybody a bit of belief. And aside from probably the Motherwell game where we lost 4-1, I think performance-wise, commitment-wise, the stuff we've kind of asked from the girls has been there in every match. You know, we haven't won every match, but we've only won three league games all season, so we've no divine right to suddenly start winning games. But I think more importantly, those kind of building blocks are what's going to help us. We've started to see, so even in the games we have lost, it's been by the odd goal, odd goal against Patrick Thistle. Um, at the weekend there, up at Aberdeen, we lost 2-0, but I felt, I felt we probably did enough to take something for the game. Maybe just weren't clinical enough. The Motherwell one was was disappointing. We were all disappointed from that. Um, and then obviously had a great result against Livingston the other week in the Cup. So, yeah, so some positive signs, um, but lots lots still to do. And like you mentioned, now it is in the split. Um, every game is a Cup final and people should certainly be approaching it as that because, you know, one win or two wins can can very quickly either give people a bit of breathing space depending on who the wins are against or if it goes the other way, then all of a sudden people get a little bit nervous. So, yeah, I think we need to recognise that everyone... Not everybody, sorry, in the bottom six, but there's obviously a collection of clubs that are fighting for their lives, ourselves being included. Um, and like you mentioned, every single game we have to approach it as if it is a cup final. It's a one-game shootout and that game needs to be won. But the girls are aware of that. And, and like I say, we've seen some progress, so hopefully we'll see that reflected on the pitch. So um, given the, the league form, uh, the Scottish Cup run that you are, are currently on, will be a welcome distraction and helping breed that confidence, uh, as you mentioned, a good win against Aberdeen, then a um, very convincing win against Livingston, sees you in the semi-final, and obviously last year, the semi-finals got uh, moved to getting played at Hamden, which is an unbelievable experience for the management team, the players themselves as well, so obviously something you are relishing, but can show the squad and something I'm sure that you're feeding onto them, that you are deserving of your place in that top flight and you are capable of winning games against very good teams yeah absolutely I mean no no disrespect obviously to the teams we've played but we've been fortunate to avoid any top six within that run however you know Aberdeen are a good 20 points ahead of us in the league so I think winning that game is a big turning point just for the mentality for us all and then again going to Livingston probably a situation we haven't faced very often this season where you're heavy favourites you know and normally it's been the reverse and sometimes that can throw challenges up mentally. But the girls dealt with that really well, performed really, really well. Um, obviously delighted with that. And then, like you mentioned, semi-final at Hamden, I think alongside Rangers, Celtic and Hearts, again, that's a unbelievable achievement for a club like Spartans to be in that company in the last four. Um, and like you say, semi-final at Hamden, none of our none of our girls have played at Hamden before, so uh, that'll be an amazing experience. Obviously, we're going to be huge underdogs, but um, we're still going to try and come up with a plan that's going to give us as good a chance as possible to win the game. Um, it's obviously, like I say, going to be a, a very tall order. But yeah, we've got that to look forward to. But we've got four huge games prior to that, which A, have got importance in the league. But what we also don't want when it does come in that semi-final is going into a game like that off the back of four defeats. You want to try and build some momentum, A, for your league campaign, B, for the confidence, but C, then to obviously go into that match and approach that match. But yeah, it's an amazing thing for the girls to look forward to. They're obviously excited. That's very much on the back burner. I've almost banned any mention of <laughs> semi-finals in Ether or Hamden until that point. Um, but yeah, when the when the day does come along, we'll obviously try and give it our best shot, do what we what we can to try and to try and get the best possible result, and we'll just see what happens. Yeah, to to reach that final, as you say, it was a it was a five 0 win over over Livingston, and looking at it in the form that Spartans were in, and where it's it's always one of those when there's a team near the bottom of the league and the team near the top of the league in the division below. It's probably the one that stood out as a potential upset, but the girls obviously showed that determination, that belief that you that you discussed to to go out and, and get that convincing win of a in a fixture that could have possibly seen them slip up. 
Yeah, and I mean, like we were honest with open enough, and again, don't mean any disrespect, but when the draw came out, we were obviously happy with the draw. But I think Livingston would have been as well because at that point yeah. we were the lowest league team, and aside from them, so yeah. So like you say, I think the the carrot for Livingston was just as great as ours in terms of you know a team from the division below making it in that semi final. I think it would have been an incredible achievement, uh, and like you say, they've been they've won more games than us this season, whilst it might be an SWPL two. Winning games obviously breeds confidence, and I'm sure they would have been confident. But I thought the girls played really, really well, really professional, good standards the whole game. Did what we asked, which was to try and give them as little encouragement as possible and try and really play as much of the game territorially as we can and try and put them under a little bit of pressure. And although it hasn't always clicked, especially in certain games like that, middle to front, we do have lots of good players. And if they do have opportunities where they're high up the pitch and and able to get involved in the attack and play a little bit more, then I think we've got good weapons there. So, yeah, so obviously delighted with that result. Disappointing that we couldn't then back it up with a, with a win in the league after that. Um, but Aberdeen away, I don't think there's many times in recent years Spartans have gone up there on one. So we were a, a little bit unfortunate. I thought we created a, a few good chances. They were a bit more clinical than us. It was quite an even game. So girls were disappointed, but that one's finished. So focus now is on Monday right next weekend, free weekend this weekend, obviously, and then... Um, a massive game, almost the definition of a cup final for both teams a week on Sunday. Brilliant, Jack. I uh, really appreciate the time uh, you've taken to come and speak to us today. And you'll take that this free week, obviously, with, the, with it being the cup final uh, to plan ahead. And I wish you all the best for the running. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. No problem. And thanks, everyone, for joining us on SWPL My Story. <laughs>